What's going on guys, Green Alert Trades in video, looking at one of the trades that went down yesterday with the Edmonton Oilers trading Ethan Bear, the Carolina Hurricanes for Warren Fogle. Honestly, this was kind of a shock to me. I thought after they traded Caleb Jones, Edmonton would be done trading their young defenseman. Apparently not though. So, uh, taking a look here at Fogle on the Carolina Hurricanes. You can see he's 24 years old, 81 overall, medium toss to potential, making 2 million bucks. I believe his contract is up though, so Edmonton will have to re-sign him. He was a third round pick back in 2014. They have as a power forward. Um, definitely, honestly, the kind of player Edmonton needs to kind of fill out that middle six. Uh, they need some more depth behind McDavid Dreisaitl. Hyman helps them out. Fogle definitely will help them out. Um, I know I've seen Carolina play once live, and I think Fogle, no lie, was the player that stood up the most for me. Like, he was all over the ice, just buzzing around. So, um, I think he will be a good player for them. The thing is, they paid way too high of a price to get him in Ethan Bear. The reason being, Ethan Bear is a young top four defenseman, and I don't think there's anything in the NHL that has more value than young top four defensemen, aside from franchise centers like McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon, etc. Uh, you can see Bear, the Carolina Hurricanes want. 23.82. He's, I think, signed actually for $2 million. So uh, they already have him cost controlled, not making too much. He was a fifth round pick back in 2015. Again, look at the value there. Uh, Bear is what? At least double, maybe triple the value of Fogel. Now, I do understand a little from Edmonton's perspective. They just traded for Duncan Keith. They're bringing back Tyson Berry. They signed Cody CC after this trade, I think, which. I don't know, I feel like Bear's better than Cody CC. They probably see some of their other young defensemen making the team, like Evan Bouchard, maybe Philip Broberg, but still, if you're dead set on making this trade, I think, you know, they should have gotten back at least Fogel and a third, in which case, uh, you kind of supplement the trade you made with Duncan Keith, Caleb Jones in the third, it's only Caleb Jones at that point. Uh, one for one here makes no sense. You think Edmonton would learn how valuable the young defensemen are from the Taylor Hall trade, like, they trade Hall for Larson, big overpay with the forward, this time they trade defenseman for forward, big over trade the defenseman. I feel bad for Oilers fans. I feel like they cannot seem to win a trade. Um, I think there's no way the Hurricanes say no here, but we'll give it a shot. And yeah, trade is accepted. That's on medium difficulty. Um, I'll show you guys the Oilers lines quick and try from Carolina's side. Don't think the Oilers are going to say yes. So after that trade, guys, I updated the rest of the Oilers roster. You can see their team stats. There's buyers. EA thinks they should be contending for the cup. First line, we've got Jaime McDavid, Pujarvi. Second, there's Yamamoto, Joycel, Nuge. Third is Fogel, McLeod, Benson. I decided to go with like a kids line here. I feel like Benson for sure, it's now or never. You gotta give him a shot in the NHL. A lot of people have McLeod actually penciled in at the third line center spot. Shore, Ryan, Archibald's the fourth line. Scratch, I actually have both Kaskin and Turris. Turris, uh, a lot of people don't think is gonna be you know, on the starting lineup unless somebody gets injured. And Kaskin, there's actually been some trade talk around. So that's what the lineup I think could look like without Kaskin, especially they might need his cap space to get Yamamoto and Fogel signed. Defensively, you got Nurse, Barry, top pair. CC Keith second pair, Russell Bouchard on the bottom pair. Potentially Broberg could crack into this top six. Obviously in game the ratings are pretty good, but Keith's overrated, Barry's overrated. Um, Barry's I think good offensively, but not defensively. Keith's gotten older. Um, Bouchard, you know, if he does get some more ice time, I think could be a good defenseman for them, but doesn't really change I think the trade they made. They make a nice signing though I thought. Derek Ryan, solid defensive center. Uh, again, Fogel's a nice piece they're getting back. I just thought they paid too much. The Hyman signing was also good in terms of the player they got, but I think they gave up uh, too much term and money. Goal tanking for them as well. Koskinen and Smith. <laughs> I didn't like that tandem for them, what, three years ago when they started or whatever, and they haven't switched it yet, and it's never, you know, been great, so I don't know why they're sticking with it. I do know they tried to make a trade for Kemper, but Avalanche outbid them, and a first round pick in Timmins, it's going to be tough to beat that. First look here at Fogel as an Edmonton Oiler. Name and number there, not really sure about that game face, but like I mentioned, we'll try the trade from Carolina's perspective now. You can see Edmonton does want Fogel, just like how Carolina wanted Bear, but Bear isn't on the block for them. Medium difficulty, even on easy, there's no way they say yes here. And yeah, trade rejected. So just like in real life, everyone felt Carolina won the trade, EA feels the same way. Again, a young top four defenseman, you need to be getting a better return than uh, Ken Holland did here, but uh, Fogel, at least the good news is like he is still young too, uh, shift for their team well, just wasn't enough. And to the trade guys and update their roster, the Carolina Hurricanes have a buyer team stash just like the Oilers. Give you a look at the lines next here. Sushnikov, Aho, Teravainen, still a sick first line. They got Nietzsche, Trocek, and Niederreiter on the second, so overall a good top six. McGinn, I've got third line left wing, playing with Stahl and Fast. They then have Levo, Lorenz, and Martinuk on the fourth line, so not bad forwards. Defensively, obviously losing Hamilton was a big hit for them. Still have Slav and Pesci on the top pair. Bear and Shea on the second pair, and then Cole and D'Angelo on the bottom pair. Uh, Scratchy and I actually have Jake Gardner, who's higher rated than, I think, a few of those guys, Bear, D'Angelo, and Cole, but he did go on waivers this year. Probably he's like the seventh guy who'll fill in if someone gets injured. Goaltending-wise, didn't make a great trade at Detroit for Noljevic, but 
They do sign both Anderson and Ranta, which I think is a pretty solid duo, to be honest. Give them the credit there. So, overall, I think, you know, the Hurricanes look pretty good. Are they as good as they were last year? Probably not. I think Dougie Hamilton's a huge loss. Of course, time will tell how Anderson and Ranta play. Ranta's good, but he has injury problems. Anderson's hot and cold. One cool thing, though, uh, Carolina's actually the original team that drafted Anderson. He then went back in the draft and was drafted by the Ducks. I feel like the game should have that there. And next year, I just want to give you guys your first look at Ethan Bear as a Carolina Hurricane. And there we go. Game face, not really the greatest. So number 74 there, Ethan Bear on the Hurricanes. Again, I feel like both teams got a good player, but I feel like they always gave up a lot more than they needed to in this trade. Let me know which team you think won the trade in the comment section below. If you guys enjoyed this one, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.